Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America online at thisweekinamerica.us. It's been called a nuanced view of world politics and its elusive quest for world peace. The much-talked-about book Perspective, The Golden Rule, from author David Meeks, who explores the folly of war and the rewards of pursuing peace. He knows firsthand as a World War II veteran. During that time, he realized that war doesn't bring about peace. In fact, it actually suppresses it. Perspective, The Golden Rule, is a sweeping semi-autobiographical account that takes us through the sweeping chronology of David from his formative years through his participation in World War II and through his subsequent 72 years of continuing wars. David is a Canadian-born World War II veteran, 96 years old, a retired podiatrist, one son, one granddaughter living in Mesa, Arizona. David Meeks, the author of Perspective, The Golden Rule, with us on This Week in America. David, it's great to have you with us on the program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Rick. Appreciate it. And uh, a belated happy birthday by a few days. You're celebrated birthday number 96, and we're here on the program today to talk about this the special book you've got. And it's a, it really gets us all thinking. The book is Perspective, The Golden Rule. We'll give you David's website throughout the, the course of the program. Let's go back to, to your background and sort of establish where all of your thoughts and opinions uh, it came from. Let's go back to your background. I mentioned being a World War II veteran. Talk a little bit about uh, about that and your experiences in war. Well, I, it may not have been as dramatic as many others who were on the front lines. I did have one episode of, uh, I, first of all, I joined the Army in 1940 in July. That was a year and a half before uh, uh, Pearl Harbor, and uh, went overseas that fall to uh, Great Britain. Uh, that was the time when uh, Europe was still under the uh, complete domination by the Nazis, and uh, Churchill called that period the, uh, uh, the, the, the very uh, lonely years. And uh, as a recent movie uh, was made of that same period. Uh, and uh, because the United States and Russia was not yet in the war. In uh, on December, on uh, August the 19th, 1942, uh, the world, the uh, biggest air battle of World War II took place over Dieppe, France. Uh, there were uh, 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 for 3,620 Canadians who were uh, killed, captured, or wounded on that one day, uh, there was uh, it was intended to be a, uh, a, a Churchill call it a uh, reconnaissance in force rather than a raid, because it's subsequently called the Dieppe Raid, and it went on for eight hours. Uh, one destroyer, um, 29 tanks, uh, and a great deal of equipment, and those uh, 3,620 lives uh, were affected by it. Uh, my part in that day was uh, simply that I was uh, involved in the Canadian medics, and I uh, helped to clear the uh, returning ships to Great Britain. Uh, they're dead and they're dying. So you had a chance to witness firsthand the, the reality of war. And I mentioned in the beginning, and we're talking with David Meeks, the author of the book Perspective, the Golden Rule. I talked in the beginning of the, of the book that uh, uh, we fight wars, to, we think, to bring about peace. We're going to fight this. We're going to uh, uh, be victorious. That's going to bring about world peace. And you say it actually suppresses it. Talk about that because it gets you thinking when you mention that because it's like, wait a minute, we keep fighting all these wars and we keep fighting more of these wars. It really doesn't bring about peace when you think about it, does it? Uh, right. The problem is that wars are not just fought for simplistic goodwill uh, reasons. They are fought for uh, other sometimes hidden reasons for the war, such as land and uh, prestige, uh, international pre um, control of various uh, e events. And uh, th those things are the ones that really direct the war. I, as an example, the 
Second World War, I view as a uh, more or less, if there were to be such a thing as a just war, it was it was a war that where the uh, the Nazis and the Japanese both were uh, imbued with a great deal of uh, uh, of the worst attributes that the human race can have, and it was worth the money and the lives that were spent on the Allied side to overcome them. But on the subsequent wars, most especially the Vietnam War, but also the Iraq War and the Gulf War, uh, they have been fought for uh, for other reasons. And those are mostly oil, uh, land, uh, and uh, for that same um, international uh, control of, uh, of uh, the events that are on their way. Yeah, so, and as we read the book, Perspective of the Golden Rule, and you do an excellent job in detailing, and it's very well researched, and we find the, the role of money and power, even religion and politics play in uh, war, peace, and, and, and other social conditions in the book, Perspective of the Golden Rule. It's interesting because one of the uh, the areas that you talk about in the book, the, and you've mentioned this, the roots of the last 80 years of U.S. wars lie in the change psychology introduced in the Cold War, the massive uh, spending by the Defense Department. Let's first of all talk about that changed psychology because this is interesting. This is a time that happened shortly after your involvement in World War II, the beginning of the Cold War. Talk about that that, that changing psychology and the impact that's had on, on how we view war today. The, uh, both the First and Second World War were preceded by depressions. Both of them, when the war began, uh, developed uh, jobs and uh, times became good for the people back home, not for the servicemen, but for the people back home who were not dying. Uh, that And for the companies that were involved, that background probably led to part of what I said. It was uh, President Charles uh, Wilson of General Electric uh, said in the late no, in the late Second World War, that there should be a an ongoing uh, relationship that uh, could be developed between business and war, the war industry, so it would be a permanent uh, effect. Okay, uh, prior to 1947, the Department of War uh, was intended for wars more or less as they came along. And uh, admittedly, there was not some preparation, not adequate preparation for maybe uh, either the First World War or the Second World War. But uh, the the fact that uh, it went on, that as the war developed, uh, the stresses developed, and uh, the the problem that became very evident to those who were thinking about it was that uh, there should be some preparation and some uh, adequate uh, advance uh, concern about wars. So uh, President Harry Truman in 1947 developed the National Security Act. The National Security Act, uh, for one thing, changed the Department of War to the Department of Defense. You analyze those words uh, the Department of War could be considered temporary. The Department of Defense could be certain be uh, an all-inclusive, all-future defense. That meant dollars to the what I call the military-industrial, political uh, union, government, university complex. I, President uh, Eisenhower called it the, the military-industrial complex. Yes. I have added the uh, politics and the unions, uh, and of course the non-union workers, and the, the government who would get, get get the taxes uh, from everybody, and all those uh, departments, including the universities who are into co contracts for research and development uh, and teaching, uh, they are all happy with the fact that there is a defense program going on. Yet that is the prelude to war. When you are developed a little uh, 
momentary uh, problems such as with the current administration uh, an impulse can lead to war and that is it changed the psychological complex from the 1940s onwards it became a defense thing and uh, the various companies were in on trying to make sure that the federal government was uh, providing funds for the, their industries to produce their uh, planes, tanks, or ships, etc. Yeah, and you point all that out, and it really gets you thinking that the the military, the Defense Department, playing defenses, as you talk about, virtually has an unlimited budget when they're talking about cutting everything to try to, to make an effort to balance the budget. The last thing they talk about is cutting back on defense spending. The book is Perspective, The Golden Rule by David Meeks. That's M-E-A-K-E-S. His website is very simple, davidmeeks.com. You can link on directly by going to our website, thisweekendamerica.us. As you read it, you suddenly realize that uh, while we're doing, for example, a program like this in Washington, you've got well-paid lobbyists uh, working for arms corporations that are out there uh, making sure their companies get their share of the money, uh, educational facilities, that type of things that uh, th- that we were talking about. Let's talk a little bit about, because time goes by so quickly, what you feel the, uh, the solution is, what it takes to prevent. And the name of the book is Perspective, The Golden Rule. Maybe something that simple could get us all to stop and take a look and, and maybe address some of these issues. Talk about adapting the golden rule and how you think that might uh, it might at least cause us to take a look at this and cut back some in what we're doing. Yes, uh, I view the golden rule as uh, an overlooked uh, item in uh, our education. I was taught the golden rule. Most of us were often in religious, religious orders, but often in a rather uh, offhand manner. It was dropped the moment you moved out of kindergarten or grade one and never mentioned again. I view the golden rule as uh, something that if you can be taught on through uh, all school levels, on through university with, of course, increasing content level. And uh, I think it would uh, apply to our personal lives when things become spontaneous and you uh, automatically do the thing that is good for your neighbor. It, 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 it rather, and that returns to you. It is a mutual feeling of uh, helping each other. That came out of the depression. Uh, the area that I grew in was very remote, and the uh, it, it, it became a, a situation for independence, but also an, a, a, a situation for interdependence. Uh, people of all religions and all colors and and uh, ethnic backgrounds came together to help each other, often in cooperative movements. It's not not a coincidence that the the Canadian one-payer medical system started 74 years ago in the the 1944 election, and uh, it has continued since. That, of course, came out of the depression of the 1930s when uh, medical care was, uh, was almost impossible to get when you were in a remote area. Uh, so that, in the long run, I view it as uh, now uh, there was an American uh, psychoanalyst whose name was uh, uh, Alfred Adler, and uh, he died in the early 1900s. He, uh, his comment, and I had isolated uh, 35 golden rules from uh, biblical groups or from uh, religious groups and uh, or from, from philosophers. Uh, His was just a little different. He just said that uh, there is a law that, uh, and of course, it's a law that can be interpreted only by the individual, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. And he then added, uh, in a few hundred years, um, we would all uh, be helped a great deal by this. Now, he didn't go on to pressure for education. I do. I uh, feel that it, it can't be left out of uh, out of it. education, and then I'm thinking now of a global education, more or less, of the United Nations, so as all countries can benefit from this, and the uh, the golden rule can um, gradually develop 
And I realized it would take the same few hundred years that uh, uh, Adler uh, spoke of. But in time, it would be uh, a preventative of war and it would be a much more congenial to society. I see so much today in the politics of the time that is so, um, um, so terrible on how they treat each other. Yes. It, it, yes. It, it, it only caused rebellion. When I, uh, my own personal feeling was, my anger doesn't rise until somebody else gets angry at me, and then my back goes up. And I think that is a kind of a universal situation. The golden rule tends to overcome that. The book is Perspective, The Golden Rule. David Meeks is our guest. That's M-E-A-K-E-S. His website is davidmeeks.com. A lot of great information on the website as well. A couple of minutes left in the program. You, you talk about wars are not inevitable, and, and we think they are. We've talked about uh, uh, the possibility of World War III, uh, the possibility of a nuclear war keeps coming up, that wars are not inevitable. And it's, it's very basic, once again, started by humans and can be avoided by humans how optimistic are you that we'll realize the simplicity, I don't want to overstate, but possibly the simplicity of just changing attitude, changing perspective, changing perception might... I would like to say I'm really optimistic. I'm optimistic in the long run because I think the innate intelligence of the entire world, of all countries, will eventually come to the surface, but I, I wish I could think it would happen in the next century, let's say. Um, like uh, Adler, I think it's going to take uh, centuries to develop. Uh, our religions are deeply ingrained in, mo in many of us. Many of us uh, feel very, very strongly about the religion in which we uh, were raised. And um, I think the golden rule can be uh, inserted into the human consciousness in the same sense and uh, will be the dividing thing. It's at that point in time, our, our um, patriotism would probably be redirected from uh, our country uh, and we all love our country, wherever we came from, uh, to the world as a whole, to our entire globe, to our people. And that is why uh, I view um, both interpersonal and international relations as uh, the prime uh, location for action in the future. The book is, is a very important one, Perspective, the Golden Rule by David Makes. His website is davidmakes.com. It's interesting because you saw, as, as we started the program, the, the first hand of the realities of war, the horrors of war, and here you are, seven, eight decades later, still witnessing it. For you, it's not just something you see in the nightly news or something you read about in a paper. I'm sure it brings back those memories of, of working with those soldiers that lost their lives or were severely uh, injured during that period. Uh, the book's important, Perspective, The Golden Rule. David Meeks has been our guest on the program. David, thank you so much for being with us on the program. Excellent job with the book. Thank you for sharing that with us. You're welcome. I hope it is a, a little help in the future. Somewhere the little spark makes a difference. Um, my name is M-E-A-K-E-S, and my uh, website is uh, www.davidmeeks.com. And you can link on to uh, that website, David's website, by going directly to our website, thisweekatamerica.us. Again, the name of the book is Perspective, the Golden Rule. David Meeks has been our guest on the program. David, once again, thank you for being with us. A very important book. It'll get you thinking it as, you, as you're reading the book. And all the information, as I say, at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. We're back on today's program right after these messages. <laughs> 